about Secret Service men and women. When it comes to danger, that's part of the job. That's why they're heroes. Remember where you were in March of 1981, where you were live for that? I was in the sixth grade. I remember it well. And by the way, the man in the foreground, he's looking right at us, a bluish suit. That's Special Agent Tim McCarthy. He was shot in the chest. He's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. So risk is part of the job. And those agents on duty right now with the president, I know they're, they're up for it. But Trump derangement syndrome, it is is everywhere, folks, and it's been driving so much of this. And actually, the whole coronavirus situation, uh, they thought it would shut the president down politically. This is just before the lockdown, this moment. I want to show you Rahm Emanuel, friend of Barack Obama, used to be his chief of staff, a congressman from Illinois. Here he is describing um, life for President Trump under lockdown. He is not going to be able to have his rallies. And it is going to psychologically, the office is isolating enough, and his inability to get the admiration, the adulation from that crowd is going to psychologically torment him. And his isolation is going to get more intense, and his tweets are going to get more vicious. Now, I want to show you that again with the sound off and in slow motion, and you'll see how prime Democrat Rahm Emanuel, how happy he is, the prospect that the president will be shut down politically. So when people raise the idea that COVID-19 and shutting down the economy, that there might have been a political bent, think of this guy's smiling face when he's talking about the president having to stay in the White House. Again, that was last March. But Trump, President Trump, he has defied them and he has defied expectations. Even as a patient, he defied expectations. And I think he said it very well here. This little video was put out on on Saturday. And he talked about, sure, he's coronavirus positive. A lot of people think it's outrageous that he became coronavirus positive. Why didn't he stay inside? Why didn't he take every single precaution there was to take? He explains it here. I had no choice because I just didn't want to stay in the White House. I was given that alternative. Stay in the White House, lock yourself in, don't ever leave. Don't even go to the Oval Office. Just stay upstairs and enjoy it. Don't see people, don't talk to people, and just be done with it. And I can't do that. I can't be locked up in a room upstairs and totally safe and uh, just say, hey, whatever happens, happens. I can't do that. We have to confront problems. As a leader, you have to confront problems. There's never been a great leader that would have done that. So right about great leaders. And what did the swamp want him to do? They wanted him to act like Biden. So if you got Biden acting like Biden and Trump acting like Biden and the swamp and the media establishment, they're all pulling for Biden. That's how Biden would win in their scenario. But you can't be a great president by just playing it safe. Yes, he took some risks and he's not the only one. Let's put up that graphic. There are people, prominent people all over the world who've gone, come down with the coronavirus the leader of Great Britain, the leader of Brazil, a couple of TV journalists I recognize on that list. Oh, and that's George Stephanopoulos. Let's not forget that George Stephanopoulos was coronavirus positive and actually went out in town without a mask on at points with the coronavirus. But now, in the height of hypocrisy and arrogance, he lectures Trump campaign officials about masks. He didn't have to have, hold rallies where people did not social distance, where did not wear masks. He didn't have to mock uh, former Vice President Joe Biden for wearing a mask and reporters who wore a mask. And how about this? This whole mask debate. Always remember this image from the Rose Garden. Uh, reporters taking their masks off right after the cameras went off. I think that's uh, that says a lot. All right. This is interesting. You know, I do watch the Sunday shows. They're basically a waste of time, but uh, I'm hooked on them. The Sunday shows, barely a word about Chris Wallace's biased performance. Now, we all saw that. In fact, the only person who raised it was Steve Cortez from the Trump campaign. And we learned something else. Chris is really, really upset. 
Now, since his debate performance was so abysmal, he's trying to rat out everybody in the room. Uh, suddenly, he's like a hall monitor, the mask police, saying who was and who wasn't wearing a mask. Again, all the stuff that was happening behind him in the debate. Watch this exchange. It's kind of lengthy, but uh, really interesting from the Fox News Sunday show over on Fox News. Steve, it doesn't matter. Everybody no. that was in that room was tested. Steve, everybody that was in that room was tested. And the Cleveland right. Clinic's regulation was it didn't matter. Everybody except and for the three of us on the stage, was to wear a mask. And people from the Cleveland Clinic came over and offered the first family mask, thinking maybe they didn't have them. They were waved away. And the Commission on Presidential Debates has issued a statement saying, from now on, if you don't wear a mask, you're going to be escorted from the hall. So forget this question of being tested Chris, beforehand. Everybody was tested you, beforehand. But no, I'm going to finish my question. Everybody was told to wear a mask. Why did the first family and the chief of staff feel that the rules for everybody else didn't apply to them? Chris, we believe that masks are very useful. The president has worn them on many occasions, including visiting the hospital where he's now a patient when he was visiting as commander in chief as a guest to visit soldiers there. He wore a mask. So we believe in masks. We also believe in some element of individual choice. People were distanced and they had been tested. Both of those things were true in that no, convention. Steve, hall. They weren't and distanced and there were rules and there was no there was they, no freedom of choice. I, they broke the rules. I was there. I was there like no, you were and they Steve, were distanced. Wh why those did they break were the not rules close together? Look, those those chairs were not close together. And again, we also believe that people. It doesn't can matter, make Steve. The rules from the Cleveland Clinic choices. were close together, Steve. And the rules okay. from the Cleveland Clinic were everybody wears you know, a mask. Why didn't they? Chris, Chris, the way you're starting to harangue me now actually reminds me of what you did to the president during that debate on Tuesday night when oh, he yeah. debated I, he, not I just Joe him. No, and then he had to he had to debate not just Joe Joe Biden, but you as well. You were not a neutral moderator then. I don't mind tough questions. I welcome you know how much reasonably tough questions, but what I don't think is okay is for you to become the effective opposition to the president. That's pretty wild. Five days after the debate, uh, the moderator is not talking about anything that happened, you know, of substance during the debate. He's talking about the behavior of people who weren't making noise in the audience. Very, very strange. Chris Wallace told us he was going to do some soul searching after that debate, seeing to acknowledge that perhaps uh, there were some shortcomings in his performance. He told that to the New York Times, but no. He's uh, blaming members of the audience. That is pretty stunning. That is actually very, very arrogant. All right. Finally, um, anybody at all a little bit suspicious of all these Republicans coming down with COVID-19? I mean, isn't there at least the possibility of sabotage? Is there? Could there be? I am going to talk to Dr. Samadhi about it. It's gotten my attention. I'm not the only one wondering uh, about it, but... Who knows? You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them. Tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.